All right, everybody, thank you for coming on out. Let's see if we got a good angle on that. Looks all right to me. Yeah, welcome. Thanks, everybody. So let's get going. Today, I want to get into the details of living a, a vibrant life. And so we're going to go through three secrets and just kind of unravel of them because there's these are a lot of things that we already know, but it's just common knowledge, but we don't know the details. So that's what I want to talk about today. And we'll talk about some of the things that you realize are common, but they're not normal and how we can make something more of that and really reach vibrant health. We all know nutrition, exercise, and reducing stress are key, but how we do it is really important. And a lot of the ways that we manage it is just basically garbage. So we want to take a couple new steps in unraveling what our body means, our physiology, and what science has to say about what it means to be healthy and get that energy that we all want. That stuff that we see on TV that looks like a joke, but it's, a, it's attainable. And what does it take to get there? So we really want to embrace some of the three key, three of the keys to getting better and staying better and really energizing our lives. And fundamentally, it's going to be eating well. We all know it, but what does that really mean? And exercise, we all know that one. Sometimes we dread it, but it's really crucial. And it doesn't have to be excruciating. And the key is, is really making all of these things enjoyable. And last one, to, lastly is managing our stress. Stress is the mother of all diseases. It is the thing that starts a, a domino effect of all the things we don't want in our life. It affects our relationships, our health, our profession, our ability to make money, how we interact with our family. It's, it's a really big deal. So let's start into this one now. What we don't understand or we haven't really taken in in our culture is a holistic approach. Now, holistic really has a bad rap in some, some arenas, but it's crucial. It is the essence of science, and it's really interesting because science now is backtracking into a systems perspective. And what we're talking about is what some people would call a systems biology. And that is a step of looking at the body from, an, from a series of interconnected systems. We just don't go down to the office and talk about our digestion and then go talk about our cognitive health and our mental health with our therapist. Really, these things are, science shows again and again and again that these things are connected. And this, is, this has to do with how our endocrine system works, how we're taking in and digesting our food, how we think, how we breathe, how our heart beats. All these things are interconnected and that's holistic thinking and that's a holistic understanding and that's where we're going today. Um, and just keep in mind that our bodies are comprised of over 10 trillion cells. These are in multiple different types of tissue. We have all different types of organs and our internal chemistry is magnificent. And that's what we're really getting down to. And one of the most underrated and underappreciated aspects that the research is really showing time and time again is that the fundamental base layer, if we get to the root of it all, it's all a matter of positive and negative ions, and that is bioelectricity. And in the end, we're gonna get down to just a little touch in on what acupuncture means and how that actually can bring it all together. So we all know that we have a digestive system. There's a lot of components to it from, that starts in the mouth and our chewing. As soon as we see food, we start salivating and that begins the digestive process. So chewing is actually a really crucial part of it. We all know we have a respiratory system. We're breathing and what that means to our bodies when we're reducing stress because we want more oxygen and when we have diaphragmatic expansion and good vasovagal, the vagus nerve is, is operating well, what that means to our entire health and our nervous system. And we know all these piece, bits and pieces. At the end of the day, we, and then we have our musculoskeletal system, and, so, and that's how we move through the world. If we sit too much, if we stand too much, if we have bad posture, these things, and then each one of these interacts and in how they impact our lives. But to be really healthy, we need to put it together. And there aren't many opportunities to really put it together because we've been taught through decades 
of standard medical practice, which works and it's important, that if we just go to the specialist here and the specialist there, we have a totally different therapeutic experience. But here's the really important thing, is that even without symptoms, those invisible things can have impact. We can be running under the radar of a lot of different health problems, and that includes diabetes, how we are setting ourselves up for later in life, and how that can translate into things as unfortunate as cancer, and arthritis, that chronic inflammation that we endured after a sports injury in our teens does add up. And this is, these are the invisibles that we really want to bring into the light and work with comprehensively because we wanna make sure that everything's working together and when that is happening, you have a functional medicine. You have a functional approach to our health that gets results. So, you gotta go back to the computer and that's our brain and our nervous system. And this is where we have a lot of, this is, this is the mainframe. It's not exclusively the only operating system that is managing the whole, our whole health. And science is showing over and over that it's, it's a two-way street. Information goes out, information comes back, and the information that is able to come back provides critical information. And that, is, that includes our sensory experience. So what we hear, the sounds that we hear, white noise, um, a good example is why AMSR. AMSR is a really good example because it shows people, just by popularity alone, it's like the, the, the popular vote, it has shown that to how we experience our senses makes a huge difference. And when we quiet things down, and um, using sound as a, as a therapy, like binaural beats and things like that, not only that, what we see, our conversations, the books we read, the TV shows we watch, these are all things, and it's a two-way street. And again and again, I really wanna make sure that we're not ignoring the invisible in the world because an absence of symptoms is not health. So many people persist through substandard health, and our body speaks in symptoms. I'll say it again, our body speaks in symptoms. And so when we start noticing these things, even when they're quiet, because you want to catch it when it's a whisper before it starts yelling, and then we're able to do that. It's that frantic feeling. It's our digestion that, that we have a stressful digestive system. We know, we have a gut feeling, things like that. Um, and then just keeping tuned up. And that's how we make sure that all of our systems are functioning at 100%. Most of us take better car, care of our cars. Um, we clean our house, but we have to keep in mind that there's a maintenance involved in our bodies. And more times than not, it's just crucial. Just keep these, the things that we're gonna cover today to the forefront of your brain and your mind, but also once in a while, go in and have a qualified healthcare practitioner give you a tune-up, because that is, where you're gonna actually be able to have somebody translate symptoms or experiences into functional solutions. Our bodies are remarkable and they can heal our, we can heal ourselves if we stay ahead of the game. And sometimes we're gonna fall behind. It's just a fact of life. We are human, this is a biological system. We're not gonna make all the best decisions and I encourage people to learn how to cheat a little bit and indulge and enjoy life. And also when we're doing these things, make sure that we are incorporating these tools that we'll be exploring because it will give us the opportunity to empower our biology to take the next step and take care of ourselves. And that is the height of medicine because even in Chinese medicine, historically there are three types of physicians. The lowest is the one that just fix the broken. The next one keeps people above board. And the third one is the one that keeps pe helps people elevate and really make sure that they're in a growth cycle, not just keeping their head above water and keep in paying their healthcare bills, so to speak, but actually vibrant. And these are the steps. The three keys 
are simple. We all know them. It's nutrition, exercise, and stress management. The key is, the secret, is that it's not a one-size-fits-all scenario. And you always want to make sure that you're speaking to, to a healthcare provider that listens. You don't want to be minimized. You want somebody to be able to hear your story. For instance, at our clinic, we spend 90 minutes with the first, uh, 75 to 90 minutes at the first visit alone. Yesterday, I just spent some time with a new patient and his words at the end were, thank you for being so thorough. Because in doing so, we were working with carpal tunnel syndrome, but we unraveled a couple different steps in there that will help him overcome the carpal tunnel syndrome, where he has been to at least three or four different healthcare providers, and he's trying to avoid surgery now. But by st exploring the depth and being able to listen and have a system to put it all together, that is how we're gonna get him some results. It's not a one size fits all. All right, nutrition, fruits and vegetables. We all know them, sometimes we hate them. But what is the deal with our nutrition? Um, most of our micronutrients, polyphenols, are really crucial. These, and, and antioxidants, these take the trash out. We are inevitably and increasingly so in, engulfed in different types of pollution, different types of stress. This is new. This is biologically a brand new scenario for us. And so we're always making sure that we have different ways to help take out the trash. Free radicals are really important to get out. And that's what things like vitamin C, that's why everybody says, oh, I get sick, I can get the vitamin C out. It's just helping clear metabolic waste. It's taking the trash out. Um, and these free radicals damage our DNA. So when the DNA gets damaged, it's not something that you see right away, but it, it limits our ability to replicate over time, and that increases the aging process. So like smoking. Um, smoking is full of, of free radicals, and when you partake in, in tobacco products, that adds more free radicals to the body, and your body has to not only clear that more, but it reduces the, the for instance, you can see it in the skin, and it's not just like a cancer thing, but you can see it. Um, the skin uh, tends to show its age more with tobacco. Um, just a couple of examples, and that is a pretty external view of what's going on, but the inside does reflect the outside and vice versa. Free radicals cause inflammation, they cause pain, and they accelerate aging. I heard this story about a young journalist that went to an elder care facility, and he wanted to create this op-ed, this story about the secrets of longevity and hear stories of these elders that are 80, 90, and even 100 years old. And he toured the facility, and he finally saw a gentleman sitting in a corner, and they were sitting there, and he looked like the oldest one in the room, and he said, sir, what is your secret to living long? And the gentleman sat there and took a deep breath and smiled and said, well, son, I drank and partied and smoked all my life and had a pretty good time doing it. And the journalist stopped and said, well, I, I haven't heard quite that story yet. And he said, well, how old are you? And he said, Sonny, I'm 52 years old. So it's an old story that I heard once, essence being find a balance in life. I want people to go out, have a good time, but then just find your antidotes. And that's one of the beautiful things. That's what drew me to Chinese medicine personally, is that it wasn't a, because then you, know, you, you go to naturopaths and different types of healthcare profession, professionals, and it's that you must abstain forever from this. I really appreciated Chinese medicine because it's about balance. It's like, if you go this direction, well, you don't want to tip the scale, so you actually want to create, you use your tools to create balance in there. Because inevitably, we're all gonna live in a world of stress. We can't isolate ourselves and lock ourselves in a room. Um, we want to enjoy so many different things in life. So that's, that's really what I want to convey. Um, it's really important, I mean, like the research is out there. It, 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 and it's common sense, but sometimes I just like to drop into some, some good research. And a Harvard study shows that 
even just five to six servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And that's not a, really a lot. It's not like you're eating uh, a bale of hay or anything. Consistently eating your fruits and vegetables, fresh ones, helps cardiovascular health so that 31% of people actually experience less risk of stroke. And the study continued on to say that with each serving, the risk of, cardi of stroke dropped by 6%. So it's really interesting. I mean, these, these are really good numbers to work because everything that we do is just a percents game. We just want to, we, we don't want to, like if you go up to the plate, if you're playing baseball and you want to swing for the fence, those are the guys that strike out. A friend of mine, Jake Hammer, who's just down the road here, he likes to say everybody loves the long ball. He loves, everybody likes the home run, the grand slam. But the best baseball players that help their team win are the ones that get hits, just one after another. And that's keeping, just playing a game of percents. It's a little bit here, it's a little bit there. It's not being obsessive and compulsive about things. It's just knowing that you're just drawing from a lot of different steps in life to make sure that you're feeling healthier. Now, I love supplements, but I also wanna caution people about living, living the pill life. Um, there's a few things that I always recommend a good multivitamin with a methylated B, uh, methylated B vitamins, methylfolate and meth uh, methylated B12. A good vitamin D supplement and a good fish oil. And, uh, and we'll get into healthy fats in a little bit. But you lose, if you just take your supplements, you lose all the, my the bioavailable nutrients that are in fresh vegetables. And those micronutrients count for a lot. So healthy fats. Healthy fats are so crucial. It's almost overdone, but I want you to know that there's a couple different fats that are really great because they got a bad rap in some places and they're overemphasized in others. Medium chain triglycerides. Those, those type three, those, those omega threes, those are the best around. You can get them in caprylic acid, coconut oil, and you can get them in, in fish oils and krill oils. You can get them in smaller doses that are less bioavailable and things like spirulina for those that, that don't, don't eat animal products. Um, you have to eat a lot more spirulina to get a, a good healthy dose, but it's available and there's a lot of other good stuff in spirulina. Um, and to a lesser extent, omega-6s. Omega-6s kind of swing both ways. But the thing is with good fats is that these fats, medium chain triglycerides have about 38 chains on them. So it's like, a, think of a train. Um, and this is energy, and this is fundamental cellular energy. We, our cells, are fueled on fatty acids. And 38 chains go into the mitochondria, and, which are the, the powerhouses of, of our cells, the 10 trillion cells. And they go through, and when it's operating efficiently and we have good fats, each one of those puts out what's called an ATP. And an ATP is basically a little brick of energy for our cells. Um, so... When we have good fatty acids, we have more brain health and more heart health. And the reason you always hear about, oh, eat your omega-3s for brain health and heart health is because these are the greatest consumers of fat. These are the greatest energy consumers in our body. Um, on par with something like 90% of energy is spent in the brain and in the heart in our body, and the rest is secondary or tertiary. So um, going through those, where are you gonna get those? Always eat nice healthy fish, preferably wild caught, um, and stuff that's not really, uh, like tuna that lives in the, in, in the ocean for, a, for many, many years. Don't wanna eat that because that biomagnifies pollution and then you're gonna get into heavy metals and things like that and that's a whole nother problem. Um, small fish, sardines, herrings, um, some types of mackerel, uh, and then definitely here in the Pacific Northwest, salmon. Salmon's a great one. Um, and then vegetable source, vegetable oils. Some vegetable oils are good and some vegetable oils are bad. Some of the bad fats we do not want. Saturated fats. Um, and this is like chicken wings, donuts, things like that. Uh, once in a while, sure, of course. And this is like, and that's where we go into like, where do we strike that balance? Um, and then trans fatty, acid, trans fatty acids or trans fats. And again, we're going to get it like, cookies and cakes. Um, the one that kind of made me sad was microwave popcorn. Microwave popcorn isn't, um, it tends to be loaded with trans fats. 
Um, fast foods, a lot of the like deep fried foods, careful. French fries, ah, I know it. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but um, again, just always striking a balance. Good for better or for worse, fats impact our brain health, our cognitive health, our energy levels, and how our cardiovascular health goes. Um, and then the really bad ones start in creating inflammation. And then you get, uh, then you get arthrosclerosis um, and plaques and things like that. Be mindful. It, it, like there, there's a balance in life. Um, lastly, okay, or next is exercise. Um, some of us love it. Some of us hate it. Uh, it doesn't have to be such a big, big deal, honestly. And the research shows, and I'm sure everybody knows this, we're sitting more. We're doing less. Kids are going to PE class less. I mean, it's like, it's like there are entire quarters of my kids' school and they don't even have phys, phys ed. I mean, I, I thought we went to physical education every day. It makes teachers sane. And the reason teachers are, have better classes when the kids get out and do, a, do physical activities and burn off some of that energy is because it changes their body chemistry. It makes them healthier, makes them happier, settles them down. And honestly, that applies to all of us. So making sure that we find something that we like, and it doesn't have to be grandiose, just 20 to 30 minutes a day, and, and be specific to your physical abilities. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to turn into a marathon runner. I'm not talking about that. So play it and enjoy it. Now, the one thing that we all love to hate is stress. <laughs> stress is a fact of life, but it really, quite honestly, has become even more prominent in our lives. It's hard to deny it. And I don't even really want to hit on any triggers that we all have. But um, I would say that as an interject, uh, I would say everybody's probably due for a media fast. Um, give it a break. We're in an election season. I don't care which side you stand on. Um, maybe just hit mute on those notifications and don't watch your favorite news channel so much. Um, it's not healthy. It really isn't. And I haven't seen the study, but I'd love to see the study of people's biochemistry when they're watching inflammatory pundits um, jabbering on about the same news cycle. Uh, it's a thing. It's a thing. And then not only that, I mean, we just have our regular things and there's so much more demand, so many more things we have to juggle in life. I've just been speaking to everybody around here today and uh, everybody's going and I, and I can relate. I am too. So, so how do we manage this one? Because a stress, like I've said, it's the mother of all diseases. It really triggers so many things in our body. It shortens our breath cycle. It reduces our heart rate variability. It changes our biochemistry dramatically, not just through our breath and becoming more acidic because we hold more carbon dioxide when we're doing short breath cycles, but it also changes our stress hormones. And one of the most important stress hormones that we have um, that is meant to help us all these, your body doesn't make mistakes. Biology is not a mistake. It's just how we harness this. And stress levels uh, are trigger cortisol, high, elevated cortisol levels. And there's no shame in it. I, I don't want anybody to sit there and feel bad about being stressed. So what do we do about it? The statistics of stress show that the majority of doctor's visits are actually due to stress. One way or another, stress has a huge impact on why people go to the doctor. From neck pain, shoulder pain, low back spasms, things like that can get, can be reverse engineered to chronic stress, which can lead to fatigue, which can lead to injury. And research shows that Stress, again, going back to cardiovascular health, people with elevated stress levels are four to five times more likely to have a cardiovascular event or a stroke. So be kind to yourselves and let's, let's incorporate some more tools. Stress damages our digestive system, our musculoskeletal system. It's, it's ubiquitous. Everybody has a gut feeling. Well, yeah, you have a gut feeling because really 
majority of our serotonin was just one of the happy chemicals. Like most antidepressants are SSRIs, um, and they're trying to make sure that there's more serotonin stuck in the body to keep people happy. But 80% of the serotonin production is actually done in your digestive system by probiotics, by bacteria. It's part of our cycle. We're symbiotic, we're a system, and we depend upon other critters. So for those of us that have taken antibiotics, um, lots of pharmaceuticals, and stress, all these things kill our microbiome. And I'm not telling anybody to go out and buy a bunch of probiotics at the grocery store because friends don't let friends take probiotics from the grocery store. It's really important, get a good one. You want a spore-based probiotic, one that actually survives the upper GI. And if your probiotics need to be refrigerated, that's a red flag. That's a big red flag because if it needs to be refrigerated, it's not gonna make it through the gastric cysts, through your, the stomach acid. And hopefully we all have enough stomach acidity, but that's a whole nother talk. So keep in mind, these are some of the steps that we'll always want to manage. And as we go through stress, we get fatigued and we become vulnerable to, to injury and things like that. And that's where we get into something that's been popularly called adrenal fatigue. I'm really cautious with adrenal fatigue because uh, it, it really is kind of an ambiguous medical term. Chinese medicine has a whole other series of differential ways to describe it. We have a whole tier of different ways to describe this, this huge category called adrenal fatigue. But... Um, it has huge impact and we recognize it. One of, one of the types that we recognize are knee pain, knee weakness, low back pain, um, digestive issues. So we always wanna make sure that we're managing our stress in a good way because this not only increases our risk to just fatigue-based pain, but it also increases our risk to injury, it creates irritability, and it has a huge impact on our gut permeability. So going away from probiotics, but how our digestive system is linked together because those, the collagen that holds our digestive system together starts expanding with stress because we're not, we're, we're too busy and we're, there's a whole lot of mechanisms in there, but we're not able to create more link, cross links in our digestive system and it's measurable. They've measured NFL football players before, I don't know how they sampled their, their digestive system, but they measured them before and after a football game and after the football game of extreme exertion and high level performance, their gut permeability actually dropped. But fortunately, this isn't, people say, oh, I have a leaky gut. You know what? Your gut can heal within hours because those cells are working over and over. So if you just create the environment and take care of yourself so that you do heal quickly, transforms the game within hours it can go down and within hours it can go up but we want to make sure we don't have other chronic factors happening and that's why high level athletes are using acupuncture ice baths uh, like cryotherapy um, high levels of nutrition I mean they are their bodies are their livelihood and many of these professional athletes are just absolutely laser focused on making sure they're healthy and these are some of the things how they do it um, and not only that, I mean, in that same, th and in the same part of this is, is an aspect of immune function. And something that really affects a lot of people, and I speak to people every single day, is weight loss. It's like how to lose that weight. Um, stress actually is a huge contributor to, to the difficulty of losing weight. Now you wanna think about it, like biologically, we're still hunter-gatherers. Our brain is still wired. It's, it, we have the ability to go to our, a higher part of our brain, but that does take a little bit of practice and at least acknowledgement of it. But at the end of the day, we are wired to be chased by tigers and bears and be worried about famine, okay? That's our biological imperative. And our brains aren't built to make us happy. Our brains are to keep us alive. That's like, don't ever mistake what the function of our brain is. It's our responsibility to use the higher aspects of our body and choose the things that will engender health. Now think about this for 
for when we're talking about, when, for those of us that have had difficulty losing weight, stress is huge. And this is why one of the ways people ask me, does acupuncture work for weight loss? Well, it's not like we have a point that, and then the, that we let the air out. It doesn't work like that. What we're doing is making sure we're talking about digestive system, um, how we're breathing, and not only that, but keeping the stress levels down, making sure people are sleeping well. Um, and then when we have that reduced stress, we actually have the opportunity to downregulate our nervous system, which is wired to add weight. Because when we lived as hunter-gatherers, famine was a thing, and the people that survived are the ones that had the ability to accumulate adipose tissue. Does that make sense? So if you have the ability to accumulate adipose tissue or, or gain weight quickly, that's a really good survival aspect. The people that can't, well, their survivability was a little bit more in question because they weren't able to store calories. Make sense? Now, we currently now all live in a very stressful environment in all aspects of our lives. And we need to make sure that we're able to exit from being chased by that tiger and, and be able to downregulate our nervous system so that we aren't pumping out stress hormones. We're doing simple, simple exercises to whatever level that in, you find enjoyment and to whatever level you can, you can do. I, I don't want anybody to exceed their physical abilities. And if people are in pain, definitely check in with like an acupuncturist or somebody that has the ability to work with pain and the whole system. Um, there's some great acupuncturists out there. Those of us at the Wellbridge Clinic are skilled at putting it together. Um, we're not just like symptomatic, poke the, poke the joint and like that's kind of like dry needling. Dry needling is just stab a muscle and hope for the best. Uh, there's, there's a whole nuance of Chinese medicine and we're gonna get into that in just a few minutes. But at the end of the day, stress is actually something that helps us. And let's use procrastination as an example. I mean, how many of you out there have procrastinated? I, I know I never do, ever. Uh, that's not true. Uh, but procrastination is one of our, is a great tool, actually. And it's how we kind of just turn that engine and use that stress. Um, that stress can be our friend. It helps us bolt. It helps us motivate. It helps us run from danger. Uh, it helps us innovate when, when we're in times of stress. Okay? So we can use it through exercise and things like that, but we wanna burn it off. We wanna make sure we can clear that stress because if we don't, stress still has a huge impact on our insulin levels, um, it, and again, it just, it causes inflammation, gut permeability, and going through it again and again. So as we wrap it up, we want to make sure that we are always taking a holistic approach to our wellness. And that includes all aspects of our life. And that's our social life, our spiritual life, and however we relate to each other and to the inexplicable, and our environmental life. Uh, it, it, it's... This, it's, it's a system and we want to make sure that we're balancing it. So if we isolate different steps of our life, we really start running like driving a car with only two wheels or three wheels. It gets a little janky. And when we're taking, taking this into account and you're thinking about different healthcare providers and how to really take, empower yourself, I want you to think about if like your home, your apartment, wherever you live. There's some things that you expect, right? What, what, like what, like, like the walls? You want walls, right? You want a floor. Um, you want a roof over your head in your house, right? Uh, what else might you want? Like plumbing? Plumbing's really crucial. You wanna be able to flush the toilet, take the trash out. You want fresh water. Fresh water's really great. We want a shower, we want a drink, we want to cook. But what, what, what's missing? in there, what do you, what's really crucial? Say like at nighttime, like electricity, electricity. So you want, always wanna have, make sure you have a carpenter, a plumber, and an electrician around. And that's what an acupuncturist is. We work on the bioelectricity of the body. So making sure you're taking a holistic approach.
And when we're doing that, taking that holistic approach, we want to, and we're taking that, acknowledging the bioelectricity of the body and how acupuncture actually is really the only medical modality that acknowledges and works with that systematically and has an organizational system to create a strategy for people to get better and understand how each system works together and help people improve their sleep, reduce pain and neuropathies like carpal tunnel or sciatica, and also helps remodel tissues. So exercise-induced fibrosis or injury-induced fibrosis, acupuncture actually changes how we remodel our tissues and get it back together because those, our collagen fibers, they'll tangle up. And when they tangle up, that causes pain because one, there's not circulation and the muscles can't extend and contract properly. That's a small cramp. And as they accumulate, it causes problems. So you always wanna make sure that we're always working just a little bit. It, you don't have to go to the acupuncturist all the time forever, but once in a while, and then when things get out of hand, then you wanna build it up a little bit. And this is our clinic here. This is, this is what it looks like. Um, and the interesting thing is a lot of people come to me and they're like, well, I just don't like needles. But the thing is, is time and time again, like every single day, most people actually report, not only did they, they felt relaxed, but so many people actually fall asleep during the treatments. That's what happens when you rewire the programming. We're all maybe the electrician, but we're also computer programmers, if you will. And research shows that we're actually able to change where, which aspects of the brain are active. And that goes for like PTSD sufferers. We can downregulate the animal part of our brain that gets activated and is, has difficulty downregulating. Because again, our bodies and our brains are built to keep us alive. So after a huge impact, people get stuck in that spot because they're always looking out for the next possible trauma. And it's a real thing. I mean, and then the micro traumas that are so prominent in the world and the people that are worked with here at Maybell, this is a really common thing. I mean, just walking down downtown Portland, you see so many people that are probably have, are grappling with some form of a trauma and they're not able to exit. And that's where addictions come in and different ways that we force ourselves into sub submitting, getting our nervous systems to submit. And acupuncture actually helps reduce that hyperactivation and helps us move into this part of our brains, the forebrain that makes us human, gives us that ability to choose, gives us that ability to downregulate, gives us that ability that the parasympathetic nervous system is known for is the rest and digest, love and connect. And if you go through polyvagal theory for the, for the nerds out there, that is really what we're talking about. Because the alternatively, most of us are actually running in what I call is like my four to five favorite Fs. Fight, flight, flee, feed, and fornicate. I mean, that's the animal side of us. I mean, we, do, we just really reduce our experience in life if we just stay in that part of our nervous system. And that's the sympathetic nervous system. So um, we're always working with that and it's just, so underutilized acupuncture. Only 1.7% of Americans used acupuncture in the last 12 months. So I really wanna encourage everybody here and there to incorporate acupuncture into your lives. Um, and really, what is acupuncture? Acupuncture is really important to understand because it's, it's straight up, it's weird. Um, I'm not gonna argue with anybody about the weirdness. I am a reluctant acupuncturist. I only tried it because I had nothing else. I spent 10 years in chronic pain and all these things I told you about that I'm trying to make sure that we all relate to, I've experienced that myself and I had to bring myself back from the brink. And fortunately in 1997, um, my mom suggested I try acupuncture and here I am today, like the evangelical acupuncturist. So, <laughs> so I'm preaching it. Um, but I also want to preach it with, with some science so make sure that everybody gets it. But at the end of the day, the essence of acupuncture is that it's an organizational system. It's a system to see things in our health as connectedness and it's really unique but the problem is is that it uses a 3,000 year old language and that is off-putting and it, it, when you come to our clinic we understand this 3,000 year old linguistic model it's important it's how we communicate but most doctors these days don't communicate like that 
And so this is how we make an approach to helping people understand what we do. And translating what Chinese medicine means in a modern sense. And check out my TED talk. It's gonna be uh, on April 13th. I'll be at UC Davis, uh, April 13th, 2024. And you can Google, um, the, mind, it, the title of the talk is The Mind-Body Bridge and what acupuncture can teach us about pain management and wellness. Um, so check that one out. Uh, it's only about 10 days away, so I'm gonna go home and I'm going to be speaking to my mirror a lot. Anyway, let's go back to this. Um, it's all about circulation. And you know this, whether it's carpal tunnel syndrome or tightness in our shoulders or sciatica, if you wanna, it's, it's just like, the analogy would be a garden. So if you're garden, watering the garden, and you have a kink in the hose, the water's not gonna get through. And what happens to a garden that doesn't get watered? It dries up and it does not thrive. It doesn't produce the fruits. So really it's all, it, it boils down to one thing and that's circulation. Let's keep in mind, acupuncturists go to school for four to six years. I'm in a doctoral program right now, so I'm, I'm adding on to my education. I really wanna it just, hang out with my colleagues and really up level and it's been really fabulous. Um, but just keep in mind that this isn't, this isn't a night school or a certification program. It's, it's a full medical program. And even as far back as 1998, the research from the National Institutes of Health have endorsed acupuncture to be shown to have significant impact on headaches, migraines, sinus and breathing problems. I know it's allergy season. Um, hormonal problems, paralysis. So people with Bell's palsy and, uh, and, and people that have suffered a stroke. That is actually something that acupuncturists can help. So please don't wait. The wait and see method is no good. There's a ton of neuroplasticity out there. So if you know somebody that has Bell's palsy like drop face or if they've actually had a stroke, get to your acupuncturist quickly and get to a good one that can speak science, um, like those of us at Wellbridge Clinic. There's, it's really important. Um, if you end up like going up the stairs to behind the corner and up the alley and you just have one day, you know, maybe, maybe you're not gonna get the full service and understand how your insurance works, help with scheduling and have a team that really can focus on you. Um, and so in, in that, that, addiction. Addiction's a huge one. Nicotine addiction. Now, if you wanna quit smoking, this is really a big step in our lives. Um, and then from there, what we do is just create circulation and, and we're going to help strengthen the immune system, reduce the stress hormones in the body, help neurologic flow. And when we do that, we can actually start navigating better through life. And think of it as like training, like, like honestly, when you go through, when you go to a functional medical provider, like an acupuncturist, we're actually creating a change. It's not magical thinking. Magical thinking is taking ibuprofen or Zizol or Claritin every single day and expecting a change. That is, that is magical thinking. Does that make sense? That's magical thinking. You really wanna be creating a physiologic change and there's plenty of evidence. Um, and I'll go into it in a fun storyline form at, our, at my TED talk and I'll do it time and time again. Or if you just wanna come in and chat with me um, over a treatment, I can help you there but we're creating physiologic changes. And when we are doing that, we're also, it takes repetition. You don't wanna see, like you wanna actually, then with some self-sufficiency, so you don't need to see your acupuncturist all the time forever, but dosing is important. And it's an opportunity to help, like you, you, you feel better, and then your body starts to go back into that rut. And we usually see people take this progressive path out. And we push people up the hill, and they pull, and the pull usually is when people go home and they start taking our advice, um, taking the herbs, which are pharmacologically active because chemistry wasn't excluded from plants. Um, and they, they change their diet and they're inspired to go for that 20 minute walk a day, for instance, or get back to the gym so they don't have knee pain. They can go for the run now. Um, and then incrementally, there's a greater degree of self-sufficiency and then you just come in once in a while for those tune-ups and people come back and they really rejoice. They're like, ah, it's been a while. I feel so much better when I come see you. Um, and that is the balance that we're trying to promote. And that's the balance we want everybody to everybody see because honestly, I know everybody on my team, our greatest joy is 
our, the success of our patients. And when we see people getting better and staying better, it just brings light to the world. You can bring light to the world more when you're not super stressed and you're feeling better. It makes a difference. So again, nutrition, stress management, and exercise. And one of my favorite quotes is from Nelson Mandela, and he said, and you know this man really knows it, in his core, it always seems impossible until it's done. I want to make sure I leave everybody here, who, everybody who's watching, maybe you can scan that QR code, just call the number. When I, we always offer, and if you scan us on social media, you'll, you'll find that we, always, we typically run an ad to make sure people have an opportunity and lowers the access to care, any, lowers any obstacles to the access of care. Um, we always make sure people can come and see us. So if you're watching this, just call and say, I saw John on YouTube and I would like to schedule an appointment. And that, and, and we'll offer you an introduction. And it's, it's a 75 to 90 minute visit, an introduction to acupuncture. And it's, it's a 75 minute appointment. And it's $47. Typically it's 150, which is a steal, to be honest. You're just not gonna get, you're not get nobody, there's no medical provider out there that, can, that will do that. Um, it's, it's really ridiculous. The people that choose to be acupuncturists are doing it because they believe, they really get it, and they're really dedicated to people's health. Um, but, we, but we do, and we've created a, a system that allows us to do this, and so we wanna make sure that you all can come in um, and get that appointment, and then you get a, a quick acupuncture treatment in there too, and then we put together a strategy, and we, we summarize what's going on and, and, and treat the person that comes into us, because a lot of people come to me, and they say, well, what, what do you specialize in? And so what a good acupuncturist specializes in the individual in front of them, the person that's here. And from there, but most people find us because they're seeking pain relief, because that's what acupuncture is famous for. But we put it together. So let's put it together and let me know if you guys have any questions. Jump into the comments. Please comment, share, and like. Send this out to somebody that you know. Um, I'm going to be reposting this and I'll send it out to all of Maybell so the community here has access to that. But thank you so much for joining in today. I really appreciate you all. And uh, have a fabulous spring. And we'll catch you next month for our next talk. Thank you. Bye-bye.